I heard somebody say it took me five years to finally kind of figure out my classroom management system. It took me four. Um, a real quick brief story. I've said it enough, I'm not so ashamed anymore. My second year of teaching was such a disaster. I actually applied for another company outside of education. I wanted to teach so bad. I thought I could do it, but I didn't know how. And I actually applied, and when I didn't get hired, I asked the woman, I said, could you tell me what I could do differently? And she said, yeah, I get back into teaching. And I said, why would you say that? And she said, because everything you talked about was about teaching. You said it with a lot of passion. So I had to go back and decide, OK, how can I make this work? I'll tell you later, I'll end the story about how I got to where I am now. Because it wasn't all by myself in a corner trying to figure it out. It took a lot of people and a lot of hard work to build the system that I had that Jake has now taken over. And we keep in touch. And I keep making sure that he stays on track. All right, here's the video. So this woman is talking about those five words. So how is everybody? Good? Oh, it's, I can tell it's Monday. If there is not a culture of learning where students feel energized and valued and worthwhile, the learning's not going to happen. It's just not going to matter. What does your prototype need? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I want to empower them to become autonomous thinkers. Why do you think that they're starving? I want them to be asking questions. I want them to not just be fulfilling a task, but having a very clear purpose to making sure that this experience and the culture can support it. Okay, your challenge for today is to be a reality TV show producer. One of the things that I've learned when I think about creating culture in the classroom in terms of designing lessons is giving students an experience to dive into. Google has hired you to help them figure out how to devise a prototype. The more authentic that experience can be, I think the more rigorous it really is, the more purposeful it is. So there's an intersection for me between authenticity and purpose. In a lot of ways, The Hunger Games is trying to tell us a lot about ourselves without coming right out and saying it. I think having an authentic experience for them, or as authentic as possible, um, absolutely contributes to them being engaged. So would you like to make a version of Hunger Games where Katniss controls the narrative? Not necessarily, because that wouldn't be as interesting for the reader. Like, because, because that, the whole government controlling is a big thing. It's part of it. So when I would interview students about which experiences would teach you the most, I continued to see over and over again that there were these moments when they dove into something, when I created something authentic for them. And on these cards are different scenarios. The more they told me that, the more I realized that had to shape what learning looked like, and the standards were going to have to fold into that. She's not the only person starving. That's why do you think he burnt the bread to get the food? Yes, the bread is food in general. It's food in general to end their hunger. You have a good point, though. The most important way that I am establishing expectations is by living them. That I am living the expectations. My brain cannot remember all of those standards when I'm teaching. So um, I boiled them down to these six categories. And I, made I am the geek in the front of the classroom or the geek at the table with that, wherever I'm at, who is just as excited, well, who is frankly more excited <laughs> than they are. Nice. Who is giving them high fives when they come up with a really insightful read or a great point. And have to be two faced in the game. Okay, so you have to get that in there somehow. Yeah. I have to teach them what it means like to be a member of this club. And I want them to know that in this club, your value comes from being authentic, joining in, taking intellectual risk. And the only way I can teach that is by living it. I had this plan, and then I realized my plan was not going to quite work, which sometimes happens with me. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. When you design a project where you get to be the, the coach, 
and you get to be the facilitator and you get to learn right along with them. I dive in in a different way. So is there any part of this prototype that's been connected to the crowd? It's very different than running a classroom or knowing the right answer. How do you explain passion? All right, so what is passion? I'm taking notes about their questions and I am asking questions and they're making me think about what they came up with in different ways. So it's so much more collaborative and I'm a learner too. I'm, just, I'm learning right along with them. Yeah. Do you have any other questions for us? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do, I do have a question. So I know that I have designed a good project when I feel as invested as a learner as they are. In order to get out of class today, I want you to write on the front something new that you learned. I don't know about you, but it, I like to be in her class. If you notice, really, if you think about it, you talk about control, she had it. She had discipline there. She had engagement. I mean, they were engaged from, day, from the very beginning. But it was almost like the students were in charge. They were in charge of their own learning. Now, make no mistakes about it. She was running the show, right? In my classroom, the buck stops with me, right? It's a benevolent dictatorship. I try not to let them know or feel that too much. I want them to feel like it's their classroom, it's their show, and I'm there just to help them. I'm the facilitator, the coach, just like she was. That's what you want your class to be. Mm -hmm.